Hello friends, this is Kik and in today's episode you will find out about the new AI from Google that outperformed GPT in 57 fields of knowledge, including mathematics and physics, Tesla, having dismissed the head developer of the Dojo supercomputer, the company Looking Glass which introduced a pocket holographic display, the most powerful humanoid robot that can withstand kicks, Boston Dynamics Robo Dogs, which are becoming a thing of the past, being replaced by Robo Mice, and the Hubble Space Telescope is ready to resume scientific work after a malfunction. All this and much more right now, let's go! Today's episode starts with the new AI from Google, which, as claimed by the colorful company itself, has beaten GPT in as many as 57 areas of knowledge. A new era of AI has begun, and it is the era of Gemini, announced Google CEO Sundar Pichai, presenting the large language model Gemini or Twins. According to Pichai and Demis Hassabis, head of Google's DeepMind division, this represents a huge leap forward that will affect all of the company's products without exception. A year ago, OpenAI released ChatGPT, which immediately became a hit in the AI field. Now Google, which has been calling itself a pioneer in this technology for over 10 years and was evidently caught off guard by the success of GPT has struck back. Google's team managed to create the first model that achieved 90% in the MMLU test, a massive multitask language understanding test surpassing experts in various tasks including mathematics, physics, history, law, medicine, and ethics. The model was designed from the outset to be multimodal, meaning it was trained not only on text but also on audio and video data. Where other models think of an image in words, Gemini notices nuances inherent to the medium. In the future, the model's sensory perception will include touch and tactile feedback, Hasabi's promised, discussing the possibilities that open up in robotics with the advent of Gemini. In addition, Gemini can freely program in Python, Java, C++, and Go, and has already demonstrated how it creates websites that dynamically code themselves in the process of use if there is a need for new features. For the internet, this is a completely new approach. You start with one page, which gradually evolves into what you really need. Gemini is not just one language model. There is a lighter version called Gemini Nano, which can run on Android devices without an internet connection. There is a more advanced version, Gemini Pro, which will soon form the basis of several Google AI services and, starting today, supports the operation of the chatbot Bard. An even more powerful version, Gemini Ultra for data centers, is in development and will appear next year. In addition to the Bard chatbot, Google's new model already supports some functions of the Pixel 8 Pro smartphone. Developers and clients will be able to access Gemini Pro through Google Generative AI Studio or Vertex AI in Google Cloud starting December 13th. For now, Gemini is available only in English, but since the model is planned to be integrated into the Google search engine, Chrome browser, advertising products, and much more support for other languages will definitely appear. But is everything really as great as it seems? During the presentation of the Gemini language model, Google showcased a video that demonstrated the seemingly impressive performance of its AI. However, the audience's amazement was short-lived. According to media reports, the tech giant significantly significantly embellished the real capabilities of the neural network. Bloomberg was one of the first to notice the discrepancy between the promotional material and reality. The journalist stated that Google intentionally left out a large part of the process between the user's request and the final result. For instance, in a segment where a user makes gestures, Gemini supposedly instantly identifies it as the game Rock, Paper, Scissors. In reality, however, things are far from being that simple. And here's a news about Tesla. The company has fired the head of the Dojo supercomputer development team. He might have been dismissed due to issues with the next generation of the supercomputer. Tesla uses Dojo to train neural networks essential for autonomous driving. Sources say that Ganesh Venkataramanan, the head of Tesla's Dojo hardware, has left the company. Ganesh was hired at Tesla when Elon Musk wanted to form a team for chip manufacturing to support the company's efforts in creating self-driving cars. He was involved in developing Tesla's self-driving chips and recently was responsible for the hardware of the Dojo supercomputer. Officially, Ganesh held the position of Senior Director of Autopilot Hardware. Tesla uses the Dojo supercomputer to accelerate its program of training neural networks for autonomous driving. The first Dojo cluster was launched this summer after a significant delay. Meanwhile, we would like to tell you about the startup Looking Glass Factory, headquartered in the USA and Hong Kong, which specializes in developing displays capable of conveying a three-dimensional image effect without special glasses or headsets. In the past, the startup had already showcased desktop screens ranging from 7.9 to 65 inches, and now they have introduced their most affordable and portable model, Looking Glass Go for $300. The new model from Looking Glass combines two major technological trends, three-dimensional displays and generative AI capable of providing content 
content for holographic devices. Like its previous models, the Pro Workstation and the Looking Glass 65 screen, the new Go allows users to immerse themselves in a three-dimensional image without the need for special glasses or headsets. The screen with a 6-inch diagonal is 10 times thinner than previous Looking Glass models and small enough to fit in a pocket or purse. However, it still needs to be connected to a battery or power supply, as it does not have its own battery. Plus, it's the first model with Wi-Fi for downloading holograms from the cloud. The expected retail price is $300, but on Kickstarter, it's possible to purchase the Go for $119. The package includes an AI-based software bundle that turns regular two-dimensional photos into three-dimensional holograms, envisioning dozens of perspectives of the same photograph. The device can display 3D images downloaded from the cloud, holographic art, and scenes scanned using Luma AI. Through the Lightforms app and ChatGPT, it's possible to generate holograms based on text requests as well as create a digital assistant with a voice and character traits. No special skills are required to work with the programs, but 3D artists and coders can use plugins and libraries from Unity, Unreal, Blender, and WebXR to create applications with holographic images. Moving on, we've already told you about the Chinese company Unitry, which specializes in the development of robot dogs and humanoid robots similar to Boston Dynamics. Chinese engineers have managed to create the most powerful humanoid robot. The new model is called H1. A video was released on the company's YouTube channel, where Unitry engineers demonstrate the phenomenal stability of H1. The robot can navigate through cluttered roads, carry a 30 kilo load, and it doesn't fall even if kicked with full force. In the video, the creators took H1 by the hand and pushed it back and forth while the robot stood on an uneven surface, yet it still managed to maintain its balance. The Unitry humanoid is 1.8 meters tall and weighs 100 kilos. Its autonomy is provided by a built-in battery with a capacity of 0.863 kWh. The leg joints have 5 degrees of freedom and the arm joints have 4. There is a system on the waist consisting of cameras and lidars. The walking speed can reach up to 5.6 km h. The H1 robot will be available for sale in 2024, with pre-orders already open and an estimated price of $85,000. Robotics experts from the Technical University of Munich in Germany, together with their Chinese colleagues, have created a mechanical mouse. The first prototype is named Nirmo. A source compares this robomouse with the quadrupedal robot dogs like Boston Dynamics Spot, favoring the former. Unlike them, the mechanical mouse has a more maneuverable body. It can move almost as efficiently as its biological counterpart. Despite the general resemblance to real mice, the robot's limbs are different. They are more like springy prosthetic legs and feet worn by people with amputated limbs. Through Nirmo's plastic ribs, you can see the electronic internals that help the robot move autonomously. The main parts are 3D printed. A miniature single board computer, Raspberry Pi, is used as its brain. Scientists have already tested the Robo Mouse. It successfully completed four tasks walking, balancing, turning, and navigating through a maze. And what would kick be without space? NASA announced that on December 8, the Hubble Space Telescope resumed scientific operations. The observatory had been in a service observation mode since the end of November, following a series of gyroscope failures. Without these devices, precise telescope aiming was impossible. After analyzing the situation, NASA's team found a solution. And today, the telescope is expected to return to service. The Hubble's orientation system includes six gyroscopes. On April 24, 2024, the old-timer will turn 34 years old. The last replacement of all six sensors was carried out in 2009, when the shuttles were still flying. Today, this option is not available. The good news is that the telescope can operate based on the readings of just one gyroscope. And for the last few years, three of them have been operational. A failure in any of the working telescopes sends the observatory into safe mode. This happened for the first time in the last year on November 19th. The next day, NASA engineers returned the telescope to operation, but a new failure again automatically put the observatory into standby mode after 24 hours. Another recovery and failure occurred on November 23rd. After this, specialists turned off the telescope for a long period and began an in-depth analysis of the problem. The telescope is supposed to return to scientific work today with all three gyroscopes recalibrated. None of them were lost, which allows the observatory to retain a margin of safety in case of new malfunctions. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to not miss a fresh portion of handpicked news. Goodbye.